All right, so the next advanced topic is uh, child themes. The whole idea with child themes is um, you can customize your site in a more powerful way and not have to worry about updates. So remember an update to your theme will remove custom code. And I don't have bold on this to bold it, but I can do it like this, custom code. It'll, it'll remove your custom code, but not your customizations from going over to Appearance Customize. That's going to be safe. Your widgets are going to be safe. Your menus are going to be safe. What's not going to be safe is your edits in the editor. So if you or your previous developer wrote a lot of custom code, you know, this is getting saved like directly right to the metal, to the bare metal of your site. And when you do updates, that stuff's going to go away because it's going to give you the latest version of the code. And here it tells you also, be careful what's going on here. If you make changes and you do updates, you might lose it. You've got a link here making a child theme. You can also see it um, whenever you have... Um, your um, under your appearance themes you can see if it was done properly and, and I'll show you in a moment you will see active storefront child and then inactive is storefront parent so when you do the update it'll update the parent and it won't change any of the details that you the custom code you've written in the child now, the way to uh, set that up, there is a document for that from the official WordPress company. So I'm going to search for it, um, WordPress child themes. And most likely, um, you might get some other result, but I want to go straight to the horse's mouth. You will see some result, hopefully, codex.wordpress.org. Any other result that you get that is not wordpress.org, I can't tell you if it's a good um, tutorial or not. Uh, I can only confirm that the one from the official company is the one that I would look at. Maybe other ones are written a little bit more user-friendly and have a fun video or whatever, but I'm just going to go directly to the one that I know that I've worked with. So there is a, a link that says Child Themes, WordPress Codex. Uh, this other second one seems to be an advanced one, more advanced. I'm going to copy this link into the into the notes so I'll do child themes there's a again uh, there's an explanation okay why would you do this and then how to do it uh, so the first thing that it says here's the first of some of your reasons if you modify your code directly these modifications might be lost when you do the updates it can speed up development time um, I don't quite believe that bullet point. Uh, it is still a lot of setup to do this technical stuff. And what else? Child theme is a great way to learn about WordPress. Yeah, I totally have time for that while I'm running my business. Yeah, so the only first one is the one that's like, I believe that one. OK, so in general, let me look at the document, and then we can see how it can be done more specifically. Uh, so the big idea is on the server, all of your themes are in a subfolder. And in this case, they've got 2014 and 15 and 13 on the server. They have, they're using the 2015 theme as their parent. So what this is saying is, a child theme consists of at least one directory and two files, which you'll need to create. So on the server, I could create a folder called anything I want, but obviously it makes more sense if I call it 2015 child or storefront-child. Then uh, it needs two files, style CSS and functions PHP. This is where your custom code is going to be written. It's still going to be uh, accessible here from the editor. But this editor is going to access the storefront child's code screen. So they're going to be a style CSS file, which has the basic styling of the site, the colors and fonts and such. And then functions, which are the advanced um, codes that make the site do more. 
Okay, so it says, and I'll show it on, on the server in a moment. But there's a there's a folder with a new child theme name, and then those two files. The style CSS file then has a little bit of human readable code that says, what's the name of the theme? Uh, Starfront child. Um, what's the address uh, to the original theme? Uh, what's the description? Some of these are optional. Who's the author? Where is it coming from? Well, the idea is it, they should make it more obvious that the things that are required are theme name and template. This child is based off of the parent 2015. I wish also it was simply labeled parent theme. But theme name and template are the two important ones. This one is linked back to the parent folder up there. This extra stuff is extra. Are you just copying those out of your parent and pasting them into the child folder? That could be a very easy way to do it, yes. You copy that out of your parent, paste it into the child, and just make a couple of changes. How does your site know to search for the child or the parent? Two ways. One is you have to set it here in the appearance theme. You have to activate storefront child, number one. Then it knows that the parent is the parent because you're going to see this line right here that says the parent is that one. And like I said, I wish it was called parent, but they call it template. Okay. So when you're done with those two files, it creates another theme that the theme is folder. No, you create it, and I'll show how in a moment, but you create it in your themes folder, but you will see a new item here in the in the appearance themes. And then you select the child, storefront child, Brit child, 2017 child. And then the second thing here is... Um, still receive the updates from the site. Yeah. Yeah, that's the whole idea for that. It'll leave alone the custom code that's been written in these two child files, and it'll update the parent. When code created through, say, an editor program, do you consider custom code? Anything is custom code that you're doing besides... Anything that you're doing in this editor? Well. And anything outside of customize would be the custom code because um, the customize is going to shield you from all of that. The editor is going to take you directly to the code. And if you make code else, change code elsewhere, like right on your server cPanel, that's also custom code. Yeah. Um, well, a couple of iterations back of WordPress, that under customize, there is a CSS area. That one's a special case, uh, and that comes when you install, nowadays, when you install Jetpack. With Jetpack, I don't have it fully set up, but under Jetpack, you would, we'd have a brand new item also, Edit CSS. That one would be saved when you do your updates to your theme. It can keep track of that. It doesn't really keep track of what's going on in the editor. But from that custom CSS screen, that'll... Now, to throw another wrinkle in it, depending on the theme, the theme itself, the theme authors themselves might give you a screen also. Custom code goes here. And if they've set it up that way, then doing the updates should also be safe. Because they've said, your Custom code is going to exist here, and we're going to keep track of it, and it'll be safe. But that's going to depend on the theme authors. Okay, so in the other file, the PHP file, basically, uh, we copy this code as well, and this code. We only need to go this far. This other stuff is not necessary. But again, it's not quite for the faint of heart. It is editing stuff on the server. It is writing, copying and pasting a little code. And yes, if you were, if I was selecting this code and I went this far right here and I didn't realize it, and I copied and pasted that in, that that'd be an error. I didn't close the bracket. I didn't close the command. So it could be one missing character. Actually, two missing. I missed the one at the top and the one at the bottom.
two missing characters, not commands, not lines of code, but two characters, uh, you know, two, um, two bytes of data, um, could break your whole site. So just to kind of show you behind the scenes on the server, I'll show you on, on the real server in a moment. But what it's talking about is in your WW folder, you, uh, this is the server, the virtual server, but you've got your site, and you've got your WP content folder, and then you've got themes. So all of those plugins that we look at in the nice pretty interface in the dashboard, all of those themes that we look in the nice pretty interface of the dashboard, they're just a subfolder in your WW folder. And if I look in themes, well, there it is. I've got Brit installed. I've got Storefront installed. I've got 2017 installed. I would follow the documentation to make a new folder. Call it 2017 child. I have to copy the other stuff, which I won't do just yet. But it is this process of creating folders, copying the files from the other one, putting it in here, making some edits in the code. Again, this is sort of like I can lead the horse to water, but I, I can't quite make you drink because it's, it is more technical than most of us would want to do. And if you notice, just for fun, broken theme. The following themes are installed but incomplete. 2017 child. Mm -hmm. I'm less than halfway setting it up, and again, I'm not going to go through the whole setup of that because it is, if you want to to do this, you, you will figure it out. But that's all going to be about the custom code. The, the point of this is for your custom code. And most of us, so I just want to go to Theme Forest. I'm going to pick a cool theme. I'm going to edit it in the customizer, and I'm very happy with that. I'll do my updates, which will not affect customizing widgets and such, and I'm fine. But if I'm a little more advanced, or I have a site that I've inherited that had custom code, I'm going to have to read that documentation, maybe test it on WAMP, and then set it up on the real server eventually. And your child that you created and massaged and loved, if you want to download it and upload it to another site, that's just a simple process. Yeah, it's taking that theme that you created and yeah, uploading it through the file manager of your cPanel to the other server and putting it in the right place. In the WP content folder, in the themes folder, you just upload that theme and you have access to it. Yeah. Yeah. You need the parent theme in there as well, right? No. You need no. the you need the um, you need the function, as the documentation says, you need the function and you need the style. You, you only need these two files from the parent. You don't need the whole parent in there. Because the style and the function have the references back to the parent. So you don't need copies of these other files. You don't need to recopy the sidebar to the... Well, I mean, if you migrate it over, like you want to use your child theme on another oh, okay. WordPress site, you yes. gotta make sure that WordPress site has the parent theme installed, correct? Yes. The the question that he asked was slightly different to that, but yes. Uh, he was saying if he created his own custom theme and all of that, yes, you would copy the custom theme. But what you're saying also, yes, you would need the parent folder and the child folder to the new server, and then they'll be connected and work. So Questions on the further questions on the child theme? I put the link in there. Read the documentation for setting up a child theme. Not necessary if you stick to the dashboard. Appearance customize. Yeah. Could you? It, it, it's not too much trouble. Put that line in there that. Uh, 
being need to be uh, present on a, any mic, any version of the site. If you copy a theme only from one server or site to another, make sure you have the parent folder and child folder copied over. Put them in you know your site slash WP content slash themes. It's not necessary unless you are writing your own custom code.